This is my number two Camelot from Black Diamond. And I found out that if I was in Europe, I could not get this reslung by any company because it's not legal for them to do so. And I get asked all the time for people who have a perfectly good cam on how they could do this themselves. So let's talk about how not to DIY. Oh, the cam broke. Now there's nothing quite like squeezing a new cam, but an old cam can be potentially super good enough from here up. This is all metal and plastic components that technically will last quite a while. Nothing's indefinite. But the sling here is only got a shelf life for about 10 years, give or take how much you use it. If you're in a van lifer and you're climbing every day, I'm not jealous, then you might only get a year out of that before it should be replaced. But if you left it in a closet like I sometimes do for many years at a time, then you will get more life out of it. How much to say? I don't know. I'm not going to tell you. But at some point, you need to replace it. And so we are going to go into all the different ways that you could do that yourself and whether or not that's a good idea. But first, let's look at the professional ways that other cam companies do it. So this is the simplest sling you're gonna find where it just goes around the thumb loop and that's it. And this is on the Metolius cams, it's on some of the Alien cams. And sometimes when you have a hybrid where you have this little bigger than the other, you could have a different color than the thumb loop, which is nice. And these slings range from 15 millimeters down to 10-ish. If you don't have any friends, you probably have this one. And this sling, uh, you can extend, but you can see what's happening at the thumb loop, where if you clip both, it's shorter, but is that a problem? And these DMM dragonflies also have that going on. But these larger DMM cams, the dragons, have a thumb stud that has the sling sitting a lot nicer. And Black Diamond reinforces this area by folding it over like that, which helps it interact better with the cable. And this is a hybrid where you have different size lobes up here and they have a split color webbing, which is pretty nice. And the ultralights have a 14 millimeter webbing. The ultralight Camelots have a Dyneema sling, which makes them wider. And the normal Camelots have a nylon sling. Then we have our fancy totems. And the sling is sewn in such a way that it's pulling on both sides evenly just because the style of cam this is. And to get that reslung can only be done by Totem. This one's 50% off because there's only 50% left. But when we broke this one, uh, you can see that it broke this stitching here, but then this ultimately failed around the head. And I just think that's pretty cool. Now I'm always looking for an excuse to do that. And this has uh, the only one that has a cord that is tied into this head and not down here. There's just a plastic thumb loop, which is, this is a very clever way of saying, don't clip to that. We have a whole video on this and why this is the way it is. So who reslings cams anyways? How much does it cost? When should you do it? And how could you do it yourself are all questions I've been getting for the last four months while I've even been making the episode, trying to answer the people who asked prior to that. Let's start with when you should replace this is probably when you're wondering if you should replace it. <laughs> while making this video, I've looked at this and I go, huh, I wonder if I should replace this. Yep. Now soft goods have a lifespan of 10 years according to the manufacturer, and it all depends on usage. Dyneema has a shorter lifespan than nylon, though you don't wanna ever push the limit because we just did a video where we tested webbing and tat, it's called, that is permanently left around trees typically it's for natural anchors where you wrap plastic around things. Natural anchors and the sun bleached ones broke low enough that someone would potentially die if they leaned back on a single piece and it would break. There's actually been accidents where people have passed away from such things. So this is too easy to fix once you watch all the way through this episode. And it's actually not even expensive if you have the ability to send it in, which that's what I would do with this, regardless of whatever best method we discover. I have been probably asked a thousand times about people sewing their own products. Please do not sew your own sling onto a cam or sew anything you depend your life on without a brake test machine to test every iteration that you do and get reliable results. I have built this entire thing based on me trying to brake test sewing loops on my slack lines and discovering how deep of a rabbit hole that is. There is a lot of ways to do it wrong. And I've actually tested quite a few home sewing jobs where things broke a lot, lot lower than they were expecting. Some would have killed them if they actually used it and some were okay. And you don't know unless you have a way to test it. 
And no, please do not email me to ask me to test it for you. So if you can't sell your own products, what are your other methods? Let's get into this and explore what you can do. I hate to disappoint you, but I really want to test like 30 plus tests in this video to really make sure we answer this. And I'm not going to do that with 30 cam. I have the same cable that goes in the thumb loops and I have a bunch of the plastic tubing in order to make half a cam that we can test over and over to make sure this interacts with the part I care about. Most of the time it's going to break here. We want that to happen when you're done with greasling in your cams too. You're not crimping that right. It doesn't break super good enough. So I'm going to put a basket, which is a U shape on the plastic tubing on this part of the cable. And the goal, so we're clear what the goal is, is that we want this to break around 15 kilonewtons. So either the cable is going to break from it pinching the sling or the sling can break. Either one's okay as long as it's like above 15 because your cam is unlikely to get more than that. So... That was disappointing. What? That's not good. I want to establish whether or not this cable has potential for more strength. And so I'm going to take a one inch tubular webbing. I'm going to tie a water knot on it. We're going to find out if we can get 15 out of this cable. Then, gosh darn it. Okay, so our cable is the weak link. Not ideal, but let's break this one. That is about 25% stronger. 3.5 millimeters. Slightly smaller. Uh, Still functional. It's half off now. Is that joke overused? Yes. We're going to see if this double up sewn sling gives us a higher result. Who knew they knew what they were doing? Yeah. It still pulls through, but at a higher force. Since we have this, what the difference is between this doubled and this side, which is not doubled. Yeah, that was lower. The Black Diamond engineers knew what they were doing when they did that doubled up sling. Are they the only ones who do that though? As far as I'm aware. Yeah, and they've been doing it for a long time. Now we can test another cable size uh, later, but I wanna know if girth hitching this is worse for the cable. What? That is Shocking! Wow! Well, that's good to know, right? Because I didn't know that. It was trying to go from a girth hitch to what looks like a square knot. Then it is actually squeezing the crap out of that. So let's see what a single strand of this does around the cable. Uh, that's higher. This did not break. I want to go break a cam. I want to go, I want to, I need to go. Damn it. This revolution is a double and the cable size seems to be a little bit bigger. Wild Country Zero Friends have an extendable sling, but that cable definitely looks bigger. This DMM Dragonfly also has one, but it, and it's rated for nine. The Wild Country Friends, they have a extendable sling. They're rated for 10. I got some flex cams up here from Trango. Ah, they're rated for 12. So their Dyneema sling is a little bit wider than my eight and a half camp sling comes about 10.5. So with the plastic tubing, it's about seven and a half millimeters. This plastic tubing is a little under six. So this cam is rated 12 kilonewtons. So if this compromises that strength, we'll see less than 12 kilonewtons. Wow, it melted the plastic. Being like this is not compromising the strength of this cam. Oh, that's nope. pretty good. Yeah, that's a pretty strong cam. Can you basket a cam to re-sling it yourself? Why don't we just do it to a cam and find out? I should be a detective if this YouTube thing doesn't work out. It broke there. Go Trango! I mean, that still feels like new. There's not significant damage here. It is pretty impressive. I'll give yeah. you that. I'll give you that. Rated to 12, showing a lot of life after two brake tests. Okay, so we could get 17 with a basket, and now we're getting nine with a girth hitch. I would girth hitch a Dyneema sling on like a carabiner. Yeah. But not yeah. a cable. Yeah, that's surprising. A little more than half wow. basket versus a girth hitch, and less than the rating of the cam. So people often wonder if drop tests produce the same results. Girth hitch sling. 
9.79. Let's say you wanted to take an $8 sling and you just wanted to do this and call it a day and your cam is reslung. Well, if you don't clip or if somebody's cleaning and they don't clip both strands, your cam is going to fall off. Now, there's a lot of things you can do on a climb you shouldn't do or something will go wrong, but can you prevent that from going wrong? Now, Chris's Death Products had a good tip. This is one inch tubular webbing and we're going to basically shove this down there and this is a way to guarantee that no one will ever climb with you again because it looks sketchy but you and i'll know that it's fine just say the guy from how not to told you that chris's death products told you this was okay that does sound pretty bad now if you think this is sketchy i've got something better for you now this has a 23.27 percent chance of higher of actually killing you because you might actually think it's clipped right and you might only be on one strand and then you take a whipper on this and you go, oh but the guy from how not to said that the chris's death products wasn't good enough you know in my head this sounded fine but as i try to justify this taping a sling on here it's just making it sound i just don't i think that's fine you would look like a dirtbag if you did this. <laughs> Maybe it's the look you're going for. So obviously a basket hitch is going to be stronger than a girth hitch, but I didn't realize how much a girth hitch was going to damage the cable. So far this hasn't broken, but I can barely get my thumb in there making this no fun to use, even though it still technically works. Now, if you don't like the idea of trying to get a basket hitch to sit nicely on a carabiner and you don't accidentally clip the wrong one, how about we try a bowlin on a bite. So the benefit of a bullet on the bite is that you're getting the basket benefit of having two strands up here spreading out the load and not pinching this cable. But a six to centimeter sling is too long and this would be hitting you in the ankles. So let's talk about your 30 centimeter sling options. Camp has an eight 0.5 and a 10.5 millimeter option. And you can see if you have a little bit more width in the material, they don't need so much height in order to have the stitching. And if you're only dealing with a short sling, that is a lot of stitching compared to this one. Okun's O slings have two different sizes as well, this being eight and this being 11 millimeter. And if you want some more width for the cam that you're putting it on, the 11 millimeter might not be so bad considering the fact that it's even cheaper than the eight millimeter. But you can also see the benefit, the green one is about one metric inch shorter of stitching. So in this case, I'm going to pick this one. I'm gonna put on this cam here. To tie this, start by putting the stiff sewing part off to one side. You're gonna go up your cam, put a little twist like so right there. Put that down through there. And then this is gonna go through that hole. And that is the way to do it when you can't put the other end all the way over the cam. Be sure to dress your knot to look something like this. And these double strands right here on this cable proved to be pretty good on the black diamond thing, even though it's a little bit more narrow. Now you wanna keep this sewn part off of the very bottom where the carabiner will be pulling. Otherwise it's gonna do this and make a little wonky. So now let's put this to the test. Not as high as I was hoping. This isn't the problem. It's just the fact that it's in a knot. But the condition of the cam is not too bad. Let's try Okun's eight millimeter sling and just see if we get anything wildly different on the same cam that we've got here. Mm, that's pretty good. Ooh, I don't like how that pinched that though, but it did break in the knot like it did last time. This cam is doing pretty good still, but since it's pinched, let's go with a fresh one and try with one of the camp slings. This one didn't pinch the cam too badly, but it also wasn't super duper good enough. I mean, 10K in isn't that bad. It's just, it'd be nice if we got the cam to break first. That's funny, both times the eight millimeter ones broke higher, but it does kind of pinch this a little bit more. And of course it broke in the knot. I know we've tried a lot of Dyneema solutions in this video so far. So let's try a nylon one. Let's see if I can get a bowl in, on a bite. I think the wider material is gonna simulate more of the sew and sling that comes on a C4, but also nylon does better in knots. And this is also only $6.95, so uh, a super good enough solution if we can get some good strength out of this. And I'm going to test this in a 
uh, cam we haven't pulled on yet. As far as a comparison to an actual sewn sling, it's not too much longer, but it is a little bit more bulky right here, but it's not, it's not too bad. Now this wider stuff makes it harder to get a big eye right here on the bullion of the bike. So let's just pull on that and see how it does. Ironically similar to the 8.5 and 8 millimeter. The cam is in a little bit better shape, but I don't know if it's worth having such a bulky material. That is plenty of bullion on the bite stuff for now. Uh, another thing you could do is take this aluminum quick link, which is pretty light at 18 grams, though the sling itself is only about 11. And you could put the sling directly on there. And in theory, if I closed that, you would get possibly 22 kilonewtons out of at least the sling. But because that hangs awkwardly low, I'm going to double this up like some of those extendable slings have. And that, it it's still about twice as tall as, as the height right here, which if you're looking for that, could work. So I'm gonna tighten this up and we're gonna find out if we can get uh, full strength out of this cam with this method. Well, that's the MBS of a seven millimeter aluminum quick link. What's great is this looks just fine. Not bad for how little this thing is. Since we have the sling, let's just try it in a basket. Hey, the basket won and the cam lost. I'm not so convinced. I like the quick link method. I'm still more of maybe a basket guy, even though the bullet on the bike turned out to be pretty good. Now, in theory, you could always take a quick link and you could hang it there, but it hangs pretty low and hits the side of my knee. So I'm not going to chase that rabbit at this point. Now, what's interesting is no one except Totem will re-sling a Totem. So at the end of this video, I've got an idea I want to test. But before we get to that, you can see that the Angel Cam has a cord. And so is cord an option for your cam because you can tie a knot and re-sling it. It drove me nuts that there was so little information about accessory cord that we broke over 100 of our nylon and polyester cords. And you can find that on our website. Three kilonewtons. Four millimeter is six kilonewtons. Five millimeter is 10 kilonewtons. Six millimeter is 14 kilonewtons. Now, we were using eight millimeter wide Dyneema slings. And so this is only a six millimeter wide, though, fatter, it, would that compromise the strength of the cable? Because at some point I'm not worried about the cord, I'm now worried about how it's interacting with the cable itself. But seven millimeters in a loop breaks almost at 21 kilonewtons. Since our Trango cam is so burly, maybe we can find out the true MBS of this cable by putting a seven millimeter cord on it. So that's roughly the right length, but it is quite a bit bulkier. Oh, the cam one! It still functions just fine, but the lobes are getting mushroomed out a bit. This is kinked a little bit worse than it was, and this broke lower because it went around a sharper bend radius than the previous tests we've done. I think the theme of this video is I'm woefully unimpressed with the numbers we're getting. I, I don't really like how bulky this is. Now people have asked, can you tie webbing in a water knot around cams? This is my first alien from a long time ago and I use copper wire to replace the triggers, but I've also used webbing in order to replace the sling. Now this is 9 16th webbing, and the concern with a water knot is well presented by Walter Siebert on how they can come undone. On a sharp edge or pin of a rock or a tree, and if it moves, then the end can be pulled easily out, even when it's tight, and the sling is open. You could potentially mitigate that risk with a beer knot, which we've made a video about, but I actually don't know how strong 916 webbing is on a cam because I made this before I had a brake test machine, but we can find out. It broke the webbing about the same as the Dyneema slings. Now one inch tubular webbing is pretty bulky, but I am curious what it'll break at. Broke. I know it's not a big cam, but I wasn't expecting that. The webbing seems okay, but it was only up to eight. Let's try this again with a bigger cam. It's still not that great. The cam survived this time, but the, the webbing tore. So let's talk about how you can get them reslung professionally. And before we talk about who does that, let's talk about how you might want to do that. Lots of hugs and gratitude go a long way for whoever is going to do it. It is a service companies try to offer to the community. They make zero dollars doing it. Please follow their instructions carefully and don't send them things that belong in the trash. And just understand that they are trying to help you out instead of selling you a brand new cam. 
Kind of like I'm doing in this video, I guess. Now expect to pay about $20 in both directions for shipping and no one's sitting around waiting to resling your cams. They have to do a bunch of things that pay the light bill and then they will get to it. So it typically takes a lot longer than you would want it to. Now I did a lot of research for this section of the video, so I give you the most accurate information I can, and I'm not gonna pretend I have it memorized. A uh, few manufacturers will replace slings, but it will be on their own cams, which makes sense. So Black Diamond for $10 a cam will resling Black Diamond cams. Now, Cedric has emailed me several times that they can't get the Z or the X series cams reslung because their machine has been busted for over a year. And if they get too many requests, they will say it's out of stock so they don't get swamped by it. When they stop reslinging cams, I get flooded with questions on how to DIY it. All of this information here will be in the description with links to each one. Metolius will do it for $5 a cam and clean and lube it up for Metolius cams. People say their cams look new when they come back. They've had the best reviews that I've read so far. DMM is in the UK and will do it for only DMM products. And their lead time is whenever they have time. Totem will service Totem cams for only eight euro. You just have to ship it all the way to Spain and back. And I wouldn't be sending them cams you need in the next month. Now, Wild Country and Trango do not do their own cams. When Wild Country supposedly did their own cams and it was past a safe age, the rumor is online, they wouldn't even send the cams back to you. But I don't even think they do it at all now. And I found out no information if Fix in Spain will resling an alien cam. So the most reliable places that you're most likely to get your cams reslung in the United States are at these few places. Runout Customs, based around Moab. They have a four cam minimum, $8.50 to $12. No international orders, no totems, and no DMM dragons. Next is Mountain Tools in Carmel, California. They'll do anything except totems from $7.50 to $19. And supposedly they're the least picky about how your cams look. They've been around since the 80s and so has their website. Yates will do it for $6. It's the official place for the DMM and Wild Country, but they'll do most cams, also not totems. I don't know if Scott wants me to say this, but technically Scott Wall Gear will probably do it if you ask real nicely. Subject to change. You just gotta recognize it's like a, a total pain in the ass, right? If you can find somebody to do it, be pretty grateful. Uh, at an average of $8 per cam and a medium flat rate box both ways, $17 both ways, six cams will cost you 82 bucks. That is the price of one new cam, so it can be worth it. However, if you have six tri cams, it only costs $160 to get a whole new set versus 80-ish to have the slings replaced, but that's up to you if that's worth it. Now, allegedly, European law says that PPE equipment cannot be altered by the company who did not make it. <laughs> Pretty valid. And technically, the original manufacturer can resling their own cam, but after 10 years, I don't think they're allowed to or no one pretty much wants to. Now, the 10-year rule is for soft goods, and if they won't touch it after 10 years, that is technically when that soft good needs to be replaced, so they're really not it's not, it's not helpful. Now, if it's only gonna cost me 80 bucks to get a rack of cams reslung professionally, and I just gave you a big list of places that will do it, if you are in the States or fortunate enough to be able to ship this somewhere that'll do it, I highly recommend it because it's going to be better than any of the solutions that I, sort of solutions that I presented to you. Now, if you consider the cost of the slings that I was breaking on these cams, eh, even at $7, which is a good price, you might as well just have it professionally done. But that's not always an option. And so it's nice to know what's safe and what's not. And girth hitching, I don't think is a good one. But what are the options for the totem? Because I don't think it would be worth it to me to ship this all the way back to Spain to get this reslung, depending how the next test goes. So here's a new-ish totem, but let's pretend this is not what you want anymore. Oh, this is terrible. Now the construction of a totem is unique in that fact that this does not go to the axle up here. The axle has nothing and the cables actually go into the back of the lobes. So you need to be pulling on both of these, but not squishing them together. It's maybe not the end of the world, but you don't really wanna do that. If you make this more into a W, as you can see there, and you clip a little half twist there, clip, clip, clip. You've gotta make sure you clip all of these, but I think that is going to give us some pretty good results. Now I've been wrong many times in just this episode alone, but you definitely wanna make sure 
that you're clipping all of those strands because if you don't clip all of them and you only clip these, it's going to come undone like this, come undone like that. But I think that'd be fairly obvious as you're going up. Oh, 10KN. The sling is fine and we didn't break the loop where it was touching the sling. So this broke in the back of that lobe right there. I really hope this video was helpful for you guys if you have a reslinging question because I know a lot of people have had these questions. I wanted you to walk away with something tangible and hopefully this gives you peace of mind and saves you money or both or neither. And if you need cams, you can get that at hownotto.com. We do ship the day you order it or your order is free if you order in stock items and you are in the United States. We want to make sure we are very reliable if you're going to buy gear from us. We also put a lot of effort into the Saturday email newsletter because we post so much you might either miss something or written form is sometimes the better form for something we're doing and there's no other way to let you know. And we also do weekly giveaways on that. So please go sign up at hownotto.com slash sign up. And if you want to go check out a homemade cam that we tested, that was pretty interesting, and you can go check that out next. Made in America.